Today, I'm gonna to show you how to save $100 cutting your own New York strip sticks. Stay to the end of the video because I also want to show you how the grocery store may or may not be cheating you on your New York strips and what to look out for. So let's get going. Now this is our whole strip loin. Now I got mine from Costco. As usual, you guys know, if you watch this channel for any length of time, I love Costco. Also, you can get it at the chef store. Anywhere that cuts their own New York strip steaks, this is the subprimal cut that they're cutting it from. So go ask them and see if you can get your hands on a whole strip loin. The whole strip loin is found in the short loin primal cut. On one side of the short loin, you are going to have the rib section. So it's over here where you find rib eyes, that kind of deal. On the other side, you would go into the sirloin. So this is the sirloin end. You can tell the difference because one looks more like a rib eye on the rib eye end. And on the sirloin end, it, there's a little round nodule that has a little bit of top sirloin in there. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit because it's gonna come up when we're talking about buying cut steaks from the grocery store. More on that later. I love a New York strip steak and here's the reason why. Out of the big three, I call them the big three of steaks. We have the tenderloin, ribeye, New York strip. You go to any steakhouse, those are the top three. What I like about the New York strip, it's marbled and still leaner than a ribeye, but it has got a little more beefy flavor than a tenderloin. So it kind of sits there in the middle. The other reason I like it is because it is the cheapest of the big three. So I spent $8.99 a pound on this. I'm gonna break down what I spent, how many steaks we got, and we're gonna compare that to what you can get at the grocery store. I think you're gonna be surprised. So stay tuned for that. I don't know why people say stay tuned in a YouTube video. There's no tuning involved. That's an old TV thing. I just can't get it out of my vernacular. So again, I apologize, but back to the video. All right, let's get started cutting up our strip loin. So we're gonna be needing a big knife for this big piece of meat. This is a 10 inch breaking knife. If you have a long chef's knife, that will help as well. That's fine. But if you go to the link in the description, you'll find the Butcher Wizard branded breaking knife. So let's get started. We're gonna start from our rib section, our rib end. That first cut, we're gonna square it up. So we're just gonna take our knife and take a little edge right there just to square up the strip loin. Get nice straight edges for our New York strips. So what do we do with this? Of course, we're gonna eat it. We're gonna put it in a hot saute pan really quick, have a quick little lunch or a snack, the butcher snack I always call it. So now we're gonna start cutting our strips. This is as complicated as it gets. We're just gonna cut three quarters of an inch or so all the way down. And I'm gonna show you a couple little variations along the way, but that's all it is. So we're gonna take our, you know, we've got about three quarters of an inch or so, however thick you want them. And we're gonna cut down. Again, when that when the tip of the knife hits that front of the board, you're gonna lift your arm up and slide it back. And there is our strip stick. Now there's a little bit of trimming we're gonna do. Now, this is always a, a point of contention. I like to trim the individual steaks. I feel like I have the most control when I'm trimming the cut steak. You can trim this whole thing down whole. I think, especially for beginners, I think it is best if you trim each individual steak, you're gonna get a much better yield that way. So we're gonna cut all these and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to trim them. Here's an extra way to cut this. So when you still have this big eye right here of meat, you can do what's called a Manhattan filet. Now, a Manhattan filet is not an actual filet. It is a strip where they take the fat off and, they're, and they, you cut it like a filet, so it's a thicker cut. The problem with some of these steaks is because that's so big, if you're gonna serve a, a strip that has any, any kind of thickness to it, you're gonna end up giving somebody a pound, pound and a half of meat. You can't do that, okay? Like, it's hard for that, for that to be one portion. So this is just another way to do it. You don't have to do it like this, but what you're gonna do is take a, a much thicker cut. So we're gonna maybe go an inch and a half instead of three quarters of an inch, and then we'll take our cut. And from here, we will trim this up Trim the bottom a little bit. You're gonna take this fat cap completely off. So a New York strip usually has a nice fat cap on top. For the Manhattan filet, you are going to take that fat cap completely off. Try to get as little meat waste as possible.
Now from here, we're just gonna cut this piece in half. And it looks like a little filet. Maybe a little more trimming to do. We can take our six inch bony knife, give us a little more control and take out some of that fat. But again, it's more marbled than a filet, but it's gonna have that signature beefy flavor that is from a strip. So this is called a Manhattan filet. Again, just another variation waiting for you to cut this New York strip. All right, to get the rest of our strips, we're just going to go a quarter, three quarters of an inch. And here are our strip steaks. Again, the great thing about cutting your own steaks is the fact that you can control all the variables. You can make a thin one, you can make a thick one, you can take the fat off, you can leave the fat on. You're in complete control of your steak experience and you are not beholden to what the grocery store gives you. So, and you know that's one of our goals here is to put the power back in your hands so you can decide how you want your steak. Do you remember when I was talking about the um, rib end versus the sirloin end and how you're gonna have a little bit of top sirloin in this primal cut on the sirloin end? This is what I'm talking about. So this, you can see right here, there is a circle right there that is starting to form. Now what this is, is this is that top sirloin that kind of gets into the strip loin. It doesn't really matter. It still is going to have a good, you're still going to have a good steak. I will tell you when we talk about the grocery store steaks, where this comes into play and how you can look and get the best steak when you're trying to buy a pre-cut steak at the grocery store. But again, this is a little bit of top sirloin. You can still make a great steak with this. You can grind it. I love to put this in my grind because that New York strip kind of beefy flavor really goes well in the, in the grind. Um, but again, you can make steaks out of it, you can make tacos out of it, you can grind it up, make a ha great hamburger. So it's up to you at this point. But I just wanted to show you as we go here. You can really start to see how it's this big here, and then when I cut it, now, when I cut this part, now it's this big, okay? And it'll eventually, on this side get to be that big. So it does, it's just a little bit of top sirloin in there, but again, you gotta look out for it. All right, so now we've cut all of our steaks all the way through. Now I'm gonna go back and trim them up. Again, so we have our nice New York strip steak. The New York strip has that uh, quarter inch of fat usually on the top of the steak. So we wanna keep some of the fat on there, but we wanna take some of it off. Again, if you like the more fat on there and you wanna do it, do it. Now, are we gonna throw this fat away? No, don't do it, please, don't, no, 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 no. We are going to keep that in our grind pile because you know, if you've seen my videos, this is how we do it. You save money by utilizing the whole thing and using the fat in your grind so you can make delicious hamburgers and all kinds of other ground beef, ground beef preparations. There is a little bit of uh, connective tissue right here. Just kind of take some of that off if you want. And then on the bottom, you just look around and if you get some connective tissue here, we might just take a little bit of that off. That's the part when you're chewing into your, you're sitting down and having your steak and you're really chewing really hard. It's some of this connective tissue, but it's, I mean, it's, it's all good. So we have our nice New York strip stick. I'm going to go through and we're going to trim the rest of these up and then we'll reconvene and I'll tell you how much money we saved. It'll be great. I can't wait. Also stick around because I'm going to show you how to pick out the perfect pre-cut New York strip steak in the grocery store. I'm going to give you what to watch out for, how the grocery store is kind of like pulling a fast one on you. And I'm going to show you here in a couple minutes. So stay with us. Don't stay tuned. Stay with us until the end. Here's the guide to pick out the best New York strip steak from the grocery store. So I got this from the grocery store. This package has two steaks in it and one of them is good and one of them you probably need to skip. So I wanted to show you that. Now, before I tell you, let's see if you're paying attention. This is your pop quiz. Which one of these steaks is better than the other one? Which one should we pick up and which one should we avoid? Do you think that A is the better steak or B is the better steak? I want to know. Let's see if you've been paying attention. Now, this is a great New York strip steak. Again, it, it has that quarter inch of fat on top. I mean, this is a pretty good one right here. But here, the sneaky one. Look at that little round piece right there. This right here is the top sirloin. 
Now, it may not seem like a lot. It's like, oh, it's a little bit of top strolling, but you're paying for the whole steak to be New York Strip. They really shouldn't be selling this one right here because it does have a little bit of top sirloin in there. And sometimes if you look really hard, sometimes they're just like out to lunch and they will get, there'll be that big nodule of top sirloin. You're paying New York Strip price for to have a third of it top sirloin. So it's a, it's a nitpick, yes, but I want you guys to know when you're picking out the right steak, let, let everyone else pick their other stuff. You want to pick the best one possible. It's very, very important that first and foremost, I think you should get a knife, get a strip loin, and cut them yourself. That's number one. But if you have to buy the cut steaks, use this guide and try to find the best one. All right, let's talk about some numbers. Money. That's what we're here. Let's save some money. All right. At Costco, we got 12.27 pounds of strip loin. It is $8.99 per pound. Now these are my local prices, yours may be different, but again, the um, comparisons are still going to be similar. At my local grocery store, I got a USDA Choice New York Strip Steak for $16.99 per pound. We are saving $8 a pound by cutting our own strip loin. If I take $8 times 12.27 pounds, then that is a savings of $98. <laughs> what, what are we even doing here? Are you kidding me? Even if we talk about the sirloin end piece and not counting that at all, we are still way ahead. You're welcome. You're welcome. I just saved you a hundred bucks.